No team has actually won on the road. You know, it'd be great to be the first. There's no tougher team than, you know, the defending champs in their building. If you want to be champions, you have to take it from them. It's a tie on the line, and we have to give it all that we have, uh, no matter what situation we're in. We have some warriors on our team, and we're not going to lose. Uh, we're going to come into this building and leave it all on the court. Tomorrow doesn't exist. It's winner take all this afternoon here in the Palace of Auburn Hills, just outside of Detroit. Only fitting that at the end of the most competitive playoff run in the history of this league, we should come down to a decisive game five. Hello and welcome, everybody. Terry Gannon along with Doris Burke and Hall of Famer Gino Ariyama. We'll start with the only one not wearing pink today. Doris <laughs> didn't get the memo. These are the games where you define your career, your legacy created in these games, and the best doors step up to embrace that challenge. Diana Taurasi's willingness in the past to embrace these kinds of moments helped her to win three national titles and establish her legacy as one of the greatest collegiate players ever. So today, whether she is a facilitator or a shot maker, I expect her to come and come big. This is a player who has a chance today to begin what should be one of the best professional careers we've ever seen. Will it be? Let's watch. Deanna Nolan, the hardest individual check in the entire WNBA, might be looking at the best athlete this league has to offer, whether it's catch and shoot, off the bounce. This is a player who, with her ability to get up off her feet, makes her a difficult guard. Now, she's suffering a hyperextended knee. Will it have an impact on these kinds of numbers? We'll see. And, Gino, there's nothing like a decisive game coming down to the end. You know all about it, the five national <laughs> championships with UConn. As a coach right now, Bill Lambeer, Paul Westhead, what are you thinking about? What are you going through? Well, they're worried about everything. And if you're Paul Westhead, the one thing you're saying is, we can beat these guys. You know what? They're the defending champions, but we can beat them. You're envisioning ways that you can win. If you're Bill Lambeer, you're worried about, oh my God, how can we lose? Because you want so much. So the one thing they both have in common, they're scared to death right now, <laughs> but they can't let their players know about it. Yeah, you don't want your players to know you're worrying about everything right now. Check out our Toyota starting lineups. And for the visitors, the Phoenix Mercury, last time they had a game here in the finals, they won it. Miller at the point does everything. On Dexter, Tarazi can hit the big shots they have down the stretch. Penny Taylor really struggled. One for 11 in the last game. Tangela Smith only one for 10. For Detroit, at home, Cheryl Ford, of course, not in the starting lineup. Elaine Powell, Nolan, Smith's got to hit the three. She's been much better in the finals. Swing Cash has got to step it up. Katie Fuchstra, the third-year player from Liberty inside. Sina Napier, Michael Price, and Bob Trammell, your officiating crew. And we are underway. Game five here in the Palace. They're on their feet. More than 20,000 on hand this afternoon on a Lions Sunday. Lions and the Vikings hooking up, but they're here in the Palace to watch the Shock try to win their third title. Feenstra inside, there's the double tipped out, and it's Phoenix basketball, so one possession and one turnover for Detroit. That was the bugaboo of game four. The reason Bill Lambert said his team lost game four was the 18 turnovers. Not a good start. Nolan matched up with Pondexter. Here's Taylor trying to get off to a good start and does. She backs Wynn Cash right in. First hoop for Penny Taylor. Good sign. Well, that's exactly what Penny Taylor needs to do. Be really aggressive when she gets the ball and not be so passive and thinking that Diana and Cappy are going to do all the work. Disappeared in game four. Nolan on the run gets fouled. She'll go to the free throw line. So the first foul of the game. We check in with Rebecca Lobo on the Detroit side. So guys, Doris mentioned that Tweedy Hyper extended her knee with about three minutes to go in game four. She hates braces, so she is wearing that tape job on her knee instead. Trainer Laura Ramos told me the tape job provides stability and gives feedback to the muscles as they are firing. I don't know exactly what that means, but Tweedy said it is sore, but she can push through it. I asked her, will you be your normal explosive self? And she said, I have to be. Feedback. <laughs> never heard that one. <laughs> How about that? But you, you do wonder, Doris, whether she'll have the lift on that jump shot. That's one of the things that really makes her tough to guard. Yeah, Laura Ramos should be the MVP in the voting if they go ahead and win this series because between Cheryl Ford and some of the others, that's been key. But Rossi, one for one beyond the arc. There's your first three of the game. On the Detroit side, you know, what do you think missing Cheryl Ford will mean to Bill Ambeer? Well, that's such a big part of their strength. The number of bodies that they can throw at you inside it's going to put a lot more pressure 
on Katie Smith and Deanna Nolan to make outside shots. Can they? I don't know. Two turnovers very quickly for the shot. Taylor trying to post up. And now to Pondexter, Doris. Yeah, Detroit opens man-to-man. -man. They'll switch a lot of screens. Fade away. Good for Kepi Pondexter, who took over the game in the second half in game four. She had 26 total points, 20 of those in the second. And wanted it down the stretch every possession. Swing cash. She won a national title with man, two people from me. That was Emma. <laughs> well, she's coming out right now. This Swing Cash, you're not allowed to miss any shots. It's been a quick hook for Bill Lambeer and Swing Cash. You see the production go down and down, which it's tough to play when you're in and out of the lineup. Feastra barely left the floor. The advantage of size inside, and that's what allowed Detroit to win game one. Six foot eight, 240 pounds. You get her that deep in the post, and it's a very difficult thing for Phoenix to match up with inside. I would think they would want to do that as often as possible, huh, guard? No question, Gino. When they've won games, they've dominated that area. And you look back to game one. Bill Lambeer did something he hadn't really done throughout the regular season. He played both Feenstra and Kara Braxton in the lineup. Two big bodies on the floor. Lynette Pearson, who's been the leading scorer for Detroit through the finals, set to check in. Three seconds in the lane. We've seen our share of those through the finals. And another turnover. Here comes Pearson averaging almost 17 a game during the finals, shooting well over 50%. She's been a star to carry them. She had 23 in game four. Contact Smith and Feenstra, and they're going to whistle Katie Feenstra. Could have taken your pick. They just bumped. And Swin takes the seat. Been interesting to see how Bill Lambeer has handled Swin Cash, because right now I think her confidence is quite low to fade away from Tarazi another three it's 10 four well right now Phoenix is kind of uh, defensively you know so mixing it up a little bit of zone a little bit of man-to-man -man, disguising it a little bit and Detroit staying in their man-to-man -man. Wayne Powell Phoenix will give that shot all night long Feast for the offensive rebound Pearson doubled inside. Contact, no foul. Off the glass, off the backboard, and in for Fournette Pearson. But here comes Phoenix. Right back at you, and that's what they do, the foul on Pearson. Rebecca Lobo said this prior to the game, that if it had been a Detroit victory in game four, this would have been your MVP. She could start for a lot of franchises, brings a lot of toughness and a different style to that four position. A little bit undersized, but doesn't lack for heart, plays hard all the time. You have to love what Clinette Pearson has given this team all season. She's just playing with so much confidence right now. It's almost like she wants the ball every possession, and she knows exactly what she's going to do with it. That's a tough player to play against. Gives credence to the notion that that certain players connect with certain kinds of coaches, and she is perfect for this organization. Shannon Johnson, the veteran, in her eighth year from South Carolina, off the bench, and in for Elaine Powell. Pearson one on one now triple team. So you get an idea of what Phoenix is going to do defensively early on. Anytime the ball goes in, especially to Pearson, they're going to swarm, knocked out, and it's Mercury basketball. A little bit of a sagging man to man that disguised as a little bit of zone, a little bit of man, but everybody's in the lane, almost daring Detroit to shoot the jump shot. From Tangela Smith, very quickly, Tarazi gets it up and in. 14 6, the largest lead. For the Mercury. Donna Trussi yet to miss a shot, if I'm not mistaken. These are her kinds of games. Johnson buys it for the on the yard. Shannon can shoot that, averaging six points a game throughout the finals. Now that's something Detroit's going to have to get. They're going to have to get a lot of those threes to go. Pondexter guarded well by Johnson, just knocks it down. And then the, releases on the way back. Who's the home team here? <laughs> Phoenix looks awfully comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> they do, don't they? But well, you know it. Sometimes it's even more of a motivation to go in somebody else's house and see 20,000 people. Hit the silencer. Thought Tarazi was thinking about letting it fly. His Taylor lost her balance and was knocked down. Feastra all over it. 
Anna Tarasi historically has made the toughest moments her best moments. She is off to a tremendous start here. It's a player who is as unselfish and willing a passer as you'll find, but she's capable of takeover performances. Katie Smith, a good defender, just goes right behind the defense. Well, Cappy Pondexter does it a little bit different. She takes you off the dribble, and she almost can tell you, I'm going to shoot from right over there, and then does it exactly the way she wants to. Foul on Shannon Johnson, third team foul on Detroit. You shoot on the fifth in each quarter. Two gunslingers right there. That was a great shot. That was a great shot right there. Taylor and Smith struggled in game four. Remember, Penny Taylor, though, carried them through a good portion of the season. May have been their most valuable player down the stretch and had 32 in game one here in the Palace. Nolan rises up. That's something that Detroit talked about going to the pick and roll more often. But Nolan going right off the pick and roll and trying to create a little bit of a switch or mismatch. Kara Braxton off the bench, posted up. Nolan takes the 15-footer, though. Pearson somehow inside with a rebound taken away by Miller. Such active hands are Kelly Miller. Tarazi doesn't stay in her hands very long. Gino, she's come out looking to score in the first half. She's done much of her damage so far in the finals in the second. Well, early on in the game, that swing cash on Diana Tarazi. I'm not sure that's the best matchup. Now they've switched and put Katie Smith on Diana. Offensive foul on Kara Braxton. So that's the team's fourth. Phoenix will be shooting the rest of the way here in the first. Lambeer, the sarcastic smile. This is what they're playing for. For Phoenix, it would be their first. Just outside of the Motor City here in Auburn Hills. Game five, decisive game five. The title on the line today. 18-9 Phoenix on top. Diana Taraji, coach, has won an Olympic gold medal, three national championships in college, and now looks for a WNBA title. Yeah, she seems to play her best in, in, in the most pressure-packed situations. I've never met a kid that was so oblivious to pressure as she is. She just thinks that she should win every game and make every shot. With more, here's Heather Cox. Phoenix has really matured and gained valuable playoff experience over the course of the series. And Diana told me she's actually learned from Detroit, saying the shock of helped the Phoenix in the finals. I think I have learned from them about mental toughness. Theirs is amazing. We need to take the next step as a group to the point where we truly feel and believe we will win the game. Detroit has shown us that. So far, I think that Phoenix has taken those lessons to heart, guys. They look very comfortable shooting 70% on the road tonight. Yeah, Kepi Pondexter at the elbow red and getting the bucket. And that's the second foul on Kara Braxton, second offensive foul on Braxton in the last couple of trips. Well, Bill Lambeer's squad has been awfully good. They're the best ever in this league at elimination games. They have won seven straight when facing elimination. See, in that call right there, what happens is Kara Braxton puts her head down and doesn't see the defense coming until it's too late. Coaches will always tell you, keep your head up. Right through the hands of Candida Smith. Pretty good pass. I'm that way you can see that pass coming, right? I, I'm not sure that defender gave her a ton of space to operate on the catch, though. I, I no. thought she snuck up underneath. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And as the gentleman behind me, the fan, let me know it's a bad call. <laughs> it won't be the last time. Katie right. Smith knocks down a three. So Detroit, perfect from beyond the arc, but down by eight. Taylor doubled and she walked from here to downtown Detroit. Still turnover on Phoenix, but Detroit's got seven. How about Paul Westhead trying to become the first coach to win an NBA title as a head coach? He did it with the Lakes back in 1980 and a WNBA title. So that would be a first. And Lambeer, of course, has won two titles as a player and now two titles as a head coach in the WNBA. Winning a title is hard at any level, any time, much less. Wow. 27 years for Paul Westhead, and to win it as a player like Coach Lambeer did, and to win it as a coach, that's that's hard to do. Hey, that's how about really hard? How do. about Phoenix, guys? So much rests on their shooting on the outside, and they started this game red hot. 
Katie Smith answers them. Wondered how she'd respond today. She only took one shot in the fourth quarter. I thought that was a mistake for her team in game four, but this is a woman who's hit more threes than anyone in the history of the game has scored more points. Will she be consistent throughout the course of the evening? But that is what also defines you as a player, whether you're there and want the ball in the fourth quarter. Rozzi way off, had a shot changed, maybe tip. Here comes Johnson. Katie Smith has done a really, really good job of guarding Diana Tarazi, making her a shoot over her, which, you know, it, you may be open, but when you've got to shoot over somebody all the time, your, your shooting percentage is going to go down. Well, they clearly need points production. Look at what she's done in the wins, 22 points. She's had that in their losses, and the percentage is clearly taking good shots and getting to the free throw line, which sets a tone for Detroit. Obviously, that picture was not recent. <laughs> She's got the black eye and proud of it. That's a smart move right there by Deanna Nolan. You know, she hasn't got a shot to drop. She hasn't been involved in the offense that much. So puts the ball on the floor, gets inside the zone, creates some contact, get herself going at the free throw line. Second foul on Kelly Miller. And so Nolan goes to the free throw line. Guys, this is a, uh, this is a series that has been very physical at times maybe teetering on out of control 10 technical fouls and all games very highly competitive we thought that if Phoenix could get their tempo where they wanted it they had a great chance but you know what I've been impressed with Gino they played to Detroit's tempo and still have been in every game uh, I think Detroit has the ability to play either way and both teams now are going to try to win the way the game is being played. Wow, that was a heck of a shot. Kelly Mazanti off the bench for Paul Westhead, knocking down the deep three. And look at the numbers from beyond the arc already. But if I would have told you, Gino, that Phoenix would score 77 points in a game here in the final, what chance would you give me that they would win the game? Well, that's, that's what you have to do, though, to be a championship team. You have to be, you know, four four we talked about baseball analogies. You either got to win with your pitching, but sometimes four you got to score 10 runs. So if you're Detroit or Phoenix, however the game is being played that night, that's how you're going to have to win it. Three seconds called, and it goes back to Phoenix. Remember, too, game one, it was 108 to 100, and Detroit won. Paul Westhead said, I've got plenty of hitters, and we're coming out swinging. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Ball in on the mismatch. And the call at this end was? Three seconds. Of course it was. <laughs> it's the, the three-second series. We should change it to four. <laughs> Johnson on the middle. Oh, look how high. Nolan got off the floor for the board. Sweetie over a flying Kenny Taylor. And Mazanti clear starts the break. Give it up, cross, Kelly. Cross, cross. A lot of talk coming in about Phoenix perhaps being tired because of their style. They go up and down every game. Detroit's the team banged up a little bit. Taylor, the easy one underneath from Pondex. How about that pass? Kathy Pondex who can get off the dribble any direction she wants. She likes to go left, but the unselfish nature of her and Tarazi to give it up when necessary. That was just a heck of a play right there. Oh, boy. And Schumacher, who also played for Gino on the block, trying to get out and guard Shannon Johnson. Mismatch quickness wise there. Now, uh, here are the hitters that Paul Westhead was talking about. How about the crossover to shake the first defender? Three bodies come at her in the white jerseys. So, as a basketball player does, give it up to the open floor on the weak side. Pretty stuff. And that's keep your head up, put the ball on the floor, draw the defense. One, Cappy can handle. Two, it's going to be a little tough. When she saw the third one, she's passing it. Win Cash back in the game, kicking it out to Smith. Tough shot, Schumacher changed it, but another offensive chance for Detroit as it's knocked out and stays at this end. So Swin Cash comes back in. You know her as well as anyone, Gino. Right now, her confidence level is pretty low. Bill Lambeer recently said when she comes and plays hard, she'll play. When she doesn't play hard, she's going to sit. You know of any other coach throughout her career who said she doesn't play hard at times? Sometimes it's mistaken as not playing hard. Sometimes you're just not productive. You know, like that. You know, you get an open shot, you got to make it. You know, and then you stop making shots, you start doubting yourself, and then maybe you're not as aggressive. 
What a good look again from Pondex with the Schumacher underneath. Happy Pondex are not only scoring, but setting up everyone offensively. It's 30 to 17. No one in the WNBA has won a championship on the opponent's home floor. Out of bounds, that'll do it for the first. Great start for the visitors. Katie Smith's got to figure out a way to turn this around. Johnson splitting with the officials. It has been all Phoenix here in the first. They close it on a 7-0 run and lead 30-17. They got nothing to worry about. No, these three are not taking their chance, their, their place. <laughs> Better chance at a WNBA title than a Grammy. Absolutely. <laughs> Bridget Pettis, by the way, assistant coach for the Phoenix Mercury, was the woman in the back seat there. I won't comment on the singing right now. Bridget, okay? <laughs> Please, no. Hey, what? Did, it, did they even give you any insight into uh, the fact that you guys would start as well as you have here? What's that? What did you sense in the locker room before this game? You got off to a great start. I mean, we came in here with an, the whole viewpoint that it's a 50-50 team. So if, if we come out here, there's no reason, no matter that we're on the road or at home, whatever. We have a chance to win this game, and we're going to go out and play it. Hey, Bridget, this is Gino Oriama. Have you guys talked at all about the fact that you're young and inexperienced and haven't been here? And what's what's been... What's been Paul Westhead's motto in that? Well, the motto of that is everyone has been in this type of situation before. Diana has played in the championship. Tangela's played overseas in championships. Cappy won the championship in Turkey. We've had players who've been on this level. Penny Taylor, she's the world champion MVP. So if we can get everybody to come together in that type of situation, remember what it was like, you know, we have the experience. Hey, Bridget, thank you. Go back to work. Thank you. All right, best of luck. Yeah, Paul Westhead's kind of had that call. Well, that's his demeanor anyway. But uh, you remember in game one when they were getting beat, and Cappy Pondexter was very upset at the end of the game trying to calm her down. And he was almost laughing in the huddle saying, we're going to win this. It's a five-game series. Don't worry. He was asked if his shooting percentage in the last two disturbed him. He said, I never get nervous. He said, if we have two bad shooting nights, the third night's going to be ours. That's a great message to deliver to your team. Plus, he, he keeps his composure with his team. He only loses his composure with the three people on the court that aren't playing for either team. In the uh, gray shirts. <laughs> That's the only time I've seen him get upset. You can relate to that. Of course, it's easy to keep your composure when your team shoots 73% in a quarter. That's what they did. WNBA Finals record. Well, now Detroit's starting to get some touches inside. I'm sure that was part of the, the timeout. But you think it's the key the rest of the way here? I, I think. Tarazi, Nolan never went out there. Air ball from D. Mm. You know what? We just had a double duck in on the opposite possession for Detroit, and Braxton went and took a turnaround jump shot. I think the player that Detroit is most missing on the floor today is Cheryl Ford. She helped him win two series. They don't win New York or Indiana without her. Now she's stretching out with Laura Ramos. Are we going to see her? If the score doesn't change, I would bet we do. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to get loose on the side, even with the bum leg. She's averaged double figures in rebounds, 11 rebounds a game. That's where she's been a huge factor. Two on one break. Look at Mazzani spotting up behind the line, even though they had numbers. Quick trigger, boy. They get up in their lanes quickly. They don't even think about it. On the, as soon as they understand that they have got the defensive backboard, they sprint to spots. You love that. She didn't even head towards the hoop. Pearson. Braxton, the offensive rebound. Smith on the reach. But Detroit has missed their last eight shots. That's a second foul. Uh, Tangela Smith, team second. Ford still sits. Remember Bill Lambeer, too, when they were getting blown out in game two here. Good crowd. People turned out, and he told his team, look around you. This is how you played in front of a crowd like this, your home crowd. Well, today you've got more than 20,000 here. Uh, Lambeer is doing a good job now. He's, he's bringing in Ivory Lada to try to get some energy here. Detroit seems to be missing a little bit of energy. I wonder if they're thinking, you know what, it's going to be really hard for us to win a championship game without Cheryl Ford. I don't know if they're thinking that. I'm just 
throwing that out because they don't seem to have the same energy level that they had in game game four. They look tired to you, Doris? Well, I'll tell you this. I asked Katie Smith that before the playoffs began. Can you repeat as champions without Cheryl Ford? She goes, our job becomes so much tougher without him. Taylor slices through off the glass and in. More productive than in the entire game a couple of nights ago in Phoenix. I hope we have a picture of that to show the fans back home because that's an international move right there. You go off the wrong foot and it really, really screws up the defense. And how far does she get on both steps oh, as she attacks the rim? That's a foreign way of playing basketball. Nolan, she got hit and bites the three. Angela Smith, her third foul. That is just a horrible foul. That might just be what Deanna Nola needs to get her off and running. Sometimes just one play really gets you going. Now that Rover defense reacted, coming a long way to contest that perimeter jump shot. Hard to do that under control, you know, contest and contain. Yeah. And, you know, give, give Nolan credit. She did not even notice the defensive player coming out. Just focus on the shot. Smith still in there with three fouls. Although Kelly Schumacher's at the table waiting to check in. Tarazi as Katie Smith fell down. Short again. Tipped out, and there's a foul on D. Loose ball foul on Tarazi, and that's her first. I don't think you want to waste some fouls. Now, Diana looks completely shocked. She goes after the, the rebound. Clearly, it commits a foul. She still looks surprised after it, though. Guess who's go. in the game? And her pops, Carl Malone, is here to watch her. She missed game one, was injured late in game four, and there's Carl's hat, at least. There he is. He was there in Phoenix, and they had a chance to close it out the other night. I think two things going on. Number one, he's nervous because this is a game five. And number two, he's worried about his daughter's physical health. Missed 19 games this year because of that knee injury. Miller, that's her third. So now, after the foul by Smith on the three that Nolan hit, a little momentum swing. And Angela's got three. Kelly Miller's got three. This young lady has shown so much courage. There is no question that Cheryl Ford is playing through significant pain. Check in quickly with Rebecca. Well, guys, Cheryl Ford been playing all playoffs with a knee injury. Well, she added an MCL sprain, a new injury to that same knee in game four. She told me it's two injuries, so it hurts twice as much. I asked Bill Lambier before the game, are you going to play Cheryl Ford? He said, if she plays, she'll be in there for the willis Reed effect, and I will be shocked if she plays more than three minutes. Doesn't have the pro heads on, though, like Willis did back in <laughs> the finals. Rebecca Lobo, of course, along with Gino Ariema, the UConn Connection, the winner of our big golf game last week. Not that Rebecca got two shots a whole lot. She would never get two shots. No, no shots. <laughs> but they did win. <laughs> There's the miss and the foul. Again, Phoenix aggressive at the offensive end. And the foul on Pearson in a second. That was a really good back cut and a really good pass. Under pressure, too. I mean, Detroit's... Got a little bit more energy right now. I think having Avilada come in, having Joe Ford come in, I think it's changed the changed the dynamics right now. And there's uh, Mario and Lily. Now Mario's happy-go-lucky. Greatest greatest as asset to him is he's just smiling all the time. Lily, Lily makes coffee nervous. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't complain to you about playing time or anything back in the day. Mario, nah. That's because she never came out. Nah, he's just happy he didn't have to pay for her to go to college. From Tarazi, Italy. Avilada, straight from North Carolina. Offensive rebound by Pearson. Good work on the glass. Detroit getting the better end of that aspect. You know, Darcy, you know who's been quiet? Cappy. Yep. After that great start in the first quarter. There's the kick out, though. Miller, a three from the deep corner. Wow. We got a lot of weapons. Wow. She doesn't have to be hurting you to, to connect with other players, so they, they sag in. They're going to take away that triple drive. That allows that kind of pass. Inside out to Lana this time. This time she connects. So the rookie with a big three. Nolan on the reach. 
Taylor. And one. You know, it's probably smart defense, I think, by Detroit. Leave the rookie open. Wait till she makes one before you come out and get her. Now, all of a sudden, you go down the other end. Penny Taylor makes a great play here. I think they get away with a foul right there. She catches. Again, another international move. Gotta love her intensity. We want to protect our house, and what better way to win a championship, uh, let alone a back-to-back -back championship at home in our house? But being at home, hopefully everybody comes with the energy uh, and the focus and the patience uh, that we need. We're excited to be home. Obviously, we worked hard all year to get home court advantage. We just got to leave it out there, do all the little things, take care of each other, and uh, I think if we do that, we'll, we'll be taking it home. One look at Katie Smith. You know, this is a tough, tough team, and they have been the best ever in terms of Winning elimination games 11 and 3, and as I said, they have won seven in a row. And Cheryl Reeve, assistant coach for Detroit, joins us right now. Cheryl, there have been points in this series where you guys have been able to dominate the paint. Offensively, you're struggling a bit, just 34% wide. Well, I don't know that we're necessarily getting the, the deep duck ins that we were getting in the, in the prior games. Uh, we got to work a little harder to get deeper and get closer to the rim. They're doing a nice job pushing us out and double teaming us. Cheryl. Realistically, how much do you think Cheryl Ford's going to be able to play right now? Well, you know, it's a it's a game five of a championship series. Suddenly things don't hurt. You know, uh, I'm hopeful <laughs> that she'll be careful and, and uh, you know, not uh, you know threaten her career in any way. But Cheeky, she's smart, and uh, I hope she has a great time and brings us some energy and gets some things done. Cheryl, thank you. Best of luck. Thanks. All right. It, got, it is realistic. I mean, these are long seasons now for these players because not only do they have the WNBA season through the summer, most play overseas and get done with their season right before this season starts. Now you throw in USA Basketball getting ready for the Olympics. Basically asking these players to play 12 months. You wonder the toll it takes on their career. I don't know how they can fix it, but some of these players don't ever get a break. I mean, they never get a break. Did you get the pretzel down? You all right? I did. I did. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Quick, it was a quick timeout. We go to Heather Cox. <clears throat> well, we heard from Detroit on the flip side. Phoenix just gave Diana Trossi a very brief spell. She's back on the floor now. We'll go into that rover. But Belinda Snell, during that timeout, they talked about Belinda playing the rover as well to keep Diana out of foul trouble. Cheryl Reeve talked about Phoenix stopping the inside. That's exactly what Phoenix talked about. They're having their wings collapse. Lastly, very concerned about Kelly Miller's three personal fouls. They're confident she can stay in the game and not foul. That's what they talked about in the timeout. But Kelly goes to the bench. So interesting, a very quick shift in strategy by the Phoenix Mercury. If they lost Miller, there might not be a more important person on this team. She runs everything, runs the point, takes some offense to defense, 94 feet, and rebounds. Plays an incredible number of minutes with very few mistakes turnover-wise. Latta looking for room. Good dish. Oh, that was a quick move by Cheryl Ford on that knee. Couldn't buy it, though. Tarazi hauls it in. Technical foul on Cheryl Ford, who went right to the official after that last offensive move. And you've got to know that. Mike Price is as good an official as there is in this league, but he's the quickest tee in the league. And she went right up to his face. And player reaction is one of the focal points of this season. Let's watch in the aftermath. Thinks she takes a hit, doesn't get a call. She's going to walk over to Michael Price, and he mm -mm, not going to take that. Well, obviously, we don't know what she said, but um, each ref has their own fresh hold of pain, I guess you call it. Pistons legend Chuck Day looking to send some of his championship mojo to Bill Lambert and his Detroit shot. But right now, shot down 16 to Phoenix. We're coming up at the half. That's Nancy Lieberman, Carolyn Peck, Ivan DeCone. Nancy, Phoenix setting the tone, shooting 73% from the field in the first quarter. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought they were a Ferrari because right now they are precision. 60% shooting. Carolyn, 10 for 10 from the foul line. Well, that's playing to Phoenix's advantage because right now the Detroit Shock aren't getting much production, especially from Katie Smith and Deanna Nolan. They got to get to the free throw line. If they're not scoring from the outside, they got to get it done inside, Linda. Nolan just one of six from the field more from them coming up at the half now let's set it back down to terry all right linda thank you very much along with doris burke and gino Ariema. everything at stake today game five decisive game on dexter in and out snell the offensive rebound to tarazi every one of her misses has been short a little tired perhaps is taylor who's had a huge 
first half. She has carried him. Guys, if it's not Pondexter, it's not Tarazi, it's Taylor any given night. That's when you have the big three, all of them capable of getting big numbers, not just scoring, but getting big numbers. And right now, that's exactly what's happening. Good dish from Nolan to Pearson. That shot blocked. Here comes Cappy. Oh, the hesitation. Couldn't finish, though. Pee Wee to swing pass in the foul on Schumacher. And that is her third as we send it over to Rebecca. And that last huddle, Bill Lambert telling us, team, we need to rebound and we need to keep them in front of you. They're taking us off the dribble and the whistle is going against us. I need rebounds, I need stops. And he emphasized over and over again, it's a long game. But guys, just sitting behind the huddle, not a whole lot of energy coming from the players. Biggest difference for me right now between these two teams, Rebecca, is the fact that Phoenix has people who are willing and capable of taking over for long stretches. Deanna Nolan, that group upstairs just talked about it. She's one for six. These are times where you need your stars to be stars. We have yet to see Detroit emerge. Oh, they haven't. They haven't emerged. And if you're talking about free throws right now, Detroit is 10 for 12 from the free throw line, and Phoenix is 10 for 10. So I don't know that the whistle is an issue. Uh, I think Rebecca's point. Energy might be the issue. That's for sure. Phoenix been over the limits since almost the seven minute mark in his quarter. Here's Miller back on the floor with those three fouls. The one little bright spot for Bill Lambeer to point to the foul trouble by Phoenix. Shot clock at five behind the back to Smith. Got to go with it and gets it. Angela Smith off of one foot. She's been much better about shot selection. There have been points where I thought Tangela's shot selection hurt this team. She's two for two, two good shots. There's the double on four, kicking it out. Cash, Tarazi a little bit late getting there as they swung the basketball side to side, made the defense work. See, that's the area where Detroit has to get the ball because when they throw it on the block, it's an easy double team. When you step out to the short corner, the double team can't get there fast enough. Screen by Taylor for Miller. Uh -uh. Now, three times this year, Detroit has come back from double-digit deficits against Phoenix. In fact, their three biggest comebacks have come against Phoenix. Johnson's starting to think that way. He's trying to get him back. Shannon Johnson's going to be left open, and she has to shoot it. Whether it goes in or not, it doesn't matter. She has to shoot it. Mazzanti getting into the action. Boy, she has come out firing. We've got 13 threes made. Detroit is actually holding their own, which surprises me, but that is Mazzanti's game, catch and shoot. She's in the perfect system for her. Well, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to tell her twice. Let's put it that way. Great pass by Johnny Johnson. You know, Shannon was out here earlier than anybody else. It was a real seriousness to her. That's a five-time All-Star without a title. You think she wants one? Miller, 12-footer, four, didn't get out there. Phoenix's ball movement, that particular possession was exceptional. How many people touched the ball quickly? Under a minute. Hey, say less! Say less! Here! Johnson to pass off the glass and in. Who's the one player has brought energy? Who's the one player has been in attack mode from the time she stepped on the floor? Shannon Johnson. Most points and a half. You saw the graphic. Ford couldn't keep her feet, but was fouled. She all right. That's a big question. Yep. Was well, a bad sight the other night. If you're a Detroit fan, at the end of the game, if you're Carl Malone, especially to watch her go down, not be able to get back up. This time she bounces up. This is what she does. She uses that wide body to get inside position. But there's been an injury already in this playoff set. Uh, you wonder about Tamika Ketchums goes down in game three. Fought that Achilles injury, or excuse me, plantar fasciitis injury th through the whole way. You wonder if back-to-back -back nights contributes to that. There's such a small margin for error, you know, and when you're healthy, your mind just focuses on the game. When you're playing with an injury, your mind is thinking about being hurt, and everything you do, you're a little bit tentative, and that leads to other problems. So. It's, it's really difficult, especially in a game of this magnitude, to play with an injury. That 
gets the roll. Cheryl really struggled from the free throw line. Is 30 percent during these finals. 12 point lead for Phoenix. 2 3 zone. Detroit shows zone on the last possession. Will they come out of it when we come back? Well, we got the coaches mic'd. We'll know before anybody else. <laughs> Phoenix basketball when we come back. Number 40 up on the top of the rafters here. Five championship drive. That's the uh, street right outside. Chuck Daly helping get those titles. And 89 and 90 to 1 1 in 2004. And of course, the shock in 03 06. So they'd like to change the name of that street to six championship drive. On Dexter over Nolan. Shock with a chance. The floater. Nope. Well, that would have been a big boost. There we get one before the break. It's always momentum builder or momentum killer right now, you know, instead of running off the court after May 3. Now Detroit walking off the court. Not quite sure. We send it over to Rebecca, who is with Katie Smith right now. Rebecca? Katie, in the regular season, you had 16-point deficit and 11-point deficit to Phoenix. Came back to win the game. What needs to happen in the second half to get this momentum back and take control? Uh, slow down their offense a little bit. I mean, they're knocking down shots, but uh, somehow try to just slow them down. We're doing all right on offense. We're just not making shots enough, but we'll be, we'll be all right. We, we chipped away a little bit there. Just got to come out for 20 minutes. All right, Katie, thank you. From the West, Heather Cox. Rebecca Penny Taylor, one of 11 in game four, already 18 points tonight. Penny, how did you psychologically rebound from that game four? Uh, well, couldn't get any worse. Uh, I knew I could play basketball. I just did in the last game. So, uh, yeah, just being uh, positive and getting out and running the ball. We're doing a good job at that. You're one half away from winning the first championship for this Phoenix franchise. How do you guys avoid looking ahead? Uh, we still a, a lot of basketball to play. They're a very good team, and we know that we have to do exactly what we just did for another 20 minutes. Thanks, Penny. We'll let you get to the locker room. Thank you. All right, Heather. Yeah, the one for 11 didn't seem to phase her at all. The veteran MVP for the World Championships from Australia trying to win a WNBA title. Detroit actually outscored Phoenix in the second quarter, but the Mercury with the lead. The studio takes it when we come back. the line as we check out our discover card game summary it was all Phoenix in the first Detroit actually outscored them in the second but double digit lead for the Mercury trying to win their first WNBA title Terry Gannon back with Doris Burke and Gino Ariema Penny Taylor just one of 11 in game four didn't hurt her confidence at all here in the first half coach oh, she's a pro Terry she's played in a lot of big games international basketball is really tough really physical she just loves the contact. Now, you look at her and you say, how does someone who's not that big, but she is really crafty, now really smart, has great footwork. Right? That international move where you get that little extra step, that's hard to defend. And we talked earlier about Diana Tarazi, Captain Point Doctor, and Penny Taylor having to come up big. Well, all three of them have brought their A game today. And Doris, how about Detroit? The backcourt struggle, especially offensively, Katie Smith and Deanna Nolan. Do you get the sense of some uncertainty in which way Detroit wants to go? Do they want to dominate inside or make perimeter jump shots? Well, it hasn't come from the perimeter to this point. I heard Carolyn say she needs it to come from the perimeter. Well, Nolan's struggling one for six. Is that hyperextended knee bothering her? But many consider this the best duo in the backcourt in the league. Will they respond here in the second 20 minutes? 20 minutes to go. The Shock trying to win on their home floor, their third WNBA title. Phoenix trying to become the first team ever in the WNBA to close out a championship on the road. Tarazi lets it fly on the first possession and gets it back. Diana hit her first two threes, started red hot, and then missed her next six. On next year, uh-uh. A positive start defensively for the shock. Here comes Nolan on the run out and a hard foul by Tarazi. Tweedy's down. And back up. Well, with the basketball in her hands, incredibly explosive speed. This is a playoff foul right there. That was never going to be an end one for Deanna Nolan. Diana Tarazi makes sure of that. Well, that was the motto uh, for the Pistons when Coach Lambert played, 
uh, and I think it's still the motto in NBA, college basketball, pro basketball, doesn't matter. When there's a breakaway layup, you either let it go and give them the layup, or you make sure that ball never leaves their hand. Detroit is a team because of Bill Lambeer. They very much take on his persona. They want to out tough you. They want to run it up your back. They want to dominate with the inside. I give credit to Phoenix for this. They've been willing to mix it up physically. I think they've sent a very clear message. Sometimes a little bit, maybe too much between Diana and Cappy, but they've sent a message. Okay, you're going to play that way. We're ready for that style. Both teams getting it done from the free throw line. Taylor starts the third and she left off in the first half. Penny Taylor with 20 in the game. And we will not hear from Bill Lambeer in the second half. He has taken off the microphone. But Rebecca Lobo was able to talk to him at the break. I was the lucky one, Terry. He said on offense, we need to stop turning the ball over. We had 10 at the half. We need to go inside and convert on those duckins. Defensively, we need to guard somebody and we need to stop Penny Taylor from creating off the dribble. Do you know, do you sense a, any urgency on the part of Detroit when they came out to start the first half? Nolan high into the air. That's what she does very well. No, I did not, but I sense it now. There, there's something in their, in their style of play right now that wasn't there at the beginning of the game. Another turnover. Cash comes up with it. Certainly a bit of urgency with this crowd of over 20,000 now. Cheryl Ford double team. Swing pass, 15 footer, well short. Here come the Mercury and the break. Hondexter with no win, the hesitation, making it look easy. Great body control, understands the defense is gonna make a swipe. Grew up in Chicago, a little break playground background for Cappy Pondexter. Marshall High School in Chicago, and then on to Rutgers. Here's Pearson. Throws it away. Good Tough defense shot. from Smith, and what a shot with Tough a hand shot. right in her face. And then look over here like we saw it, Cappy. <laughs> Come on, how can we miss it? Everybody in America saw that. So you sense something perhaps from Detroit, but back come the Mercury just like that. That leads you to believe, Stars, that there may be some championship character inside this Phoenix team because it would be so easy on the road to let it get tie two-point game but instead they've come back with their own answer she's never won a championship she's desperate for one her teammate Donna Trazzi is three in the collegiate level Cappy wants this let's check in with Heather Cox right now Heather well and you can tell how much Phoenix implements what coach Westhead talks about at halftime because that's exactly what he said we have to get Cappy involved we've already seen the result they want to do it off of screens any way that they can and we know it can be done guys in game four Cappy Pondexter 20 of her 26 points in the second half of that game the one thing though Heather and guys about Phoenix is that you can come back on them if they start missing shots because they don't take the air out of the ball. They don't slow it down. And that's good and bad. That, that's going to give Detroit enough possessions to come back. Right. Fade away by Nolan. Ford had it. Swin Cash had it. And they both walked with it. Well, Phoenix is a fast-breaking team. Look at this, 11-1. to 1. They've dominated throughout the course of the series. Hasn't always translated to wins, but it's translated to a lead here. 25-1, to 1, the last two games, the advantage. In terms of the fast break. Backdoor, nice defense from Smith. Cheryl Ford still yelling at the officials. He's been frustrated, obviously, with the injury, but uh, with the officials, as much as anything, backs in to Smith, and they call Tangela for the hold. That's her fourth. Team's third already here in the third. Every player that commits a foul, there's good defense there by Katie Smith. Great defense. Anticipated the backdoor cut, read it just right, got in the passing lane. Now this is what happens in the aftermath. No question, denies the backdoor, stays close enough. It's after the play where there's a little arm catch, and Diana, 
No throw. We've seen plenty of those kinds of plays. I think these officials, to their credit, have done a very nice job not being over-involved and still keeping this game under control. I probably jinxed us, didn't I? Oh, of course you did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here comes Miller. I did expect, actually, in the first quarter today to see more of that. And uh, either the officials did a great job of keeping it under control or the players did themselves. Ford trying to keep pace with Taylor, but couldn't. So that's Cheryl's second. That shows a little bit of maturity on both teams' part because maybe game three, game four, game two, whatever. But this is game five. And the last thing you want is to cause your team to lose because you get thrown out of a game for doing something stupid. So with the graphic how effective Detroit has been with Cheryl Ford, not without. Yeah, I was going to ask Coach. I mean, if you're if you're coaching Cheryl Ford, you see that kind of plus minus where you're down 14 with her on the floor. Is it worth it to play her? I thought she brought something pretty good to the table when she came in in the first half. So, you know, Bill's got to trust his instincts. Miller left all alone because of Penny Taylor and the penetration. He's got to find an answer for Taylor. The one thing they said they wanted to take away from Penny Taylor was individually getting her isolated off the bounce one on one because she scores or in that case distributes to a teammate. But Ford was really working hard on the block. Didn't get the ball. Johnson. I just watched the body English and the expression on the face of Cheryl Ford. Frustration. Don't forget Yankees and Red Sox Sunday night baseball coming your way eight o'clock Eastern time presented by Taco Bell. Part of the hunt for October presented by Holiday Inn. Classic matchup. There's, there's probably some frustration on Cheryl Ford's part. Because if she's hurt and she's in the game, give her the ball. <laughs> well, they played volleyball along the sidelines. Too bad Tarazi was on the line. But was she on the sideline? Because this is not a pass to herself. She makes the right play. Now she's got to be on the sideline. Yeah, but she didn't establish herself yeah. Yeah, okay. before That's catching the basketball. Yeah, yeah, Tyna was in perfect position, too. How many feet do you have to have on the floor in the WNBA? One, can you drag? College football. <laughs> can you have to have both in? Can you drag one? What can you do? And can you get knocked out while the ball is <laughs> in the uh, Tackle that way. No pun intended. Here's Johnson. Yep. Nothing doing from the outside for the shock. Not true at the other end, though. Pondexter rattles another one home. The lead is 19, an 8-0 Mercury run. Well, you know, this may be the Motor City, but right now Phoenix is cruising, guys. I've got to tell you, man, they're just playing at a nice pace, not too quick, not too slow. There doesn't seem to be any rush in them at all. They're just methodically going up and down the floor. They are the ones with the better motor right now. This is Penny Taylor's husband, to which Diana Taurasi asked the question, is he the Eva Longoria of the WNBA? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they knock one down from the perimeter. Shannon Johnson makes it a 17-point deficit. And the Detroit shot go 2-3 zone, which throughout the course of this playoffs has helped them. Will it here? I think that neutralizes some of uh, Penny Taylor's dribble penetration, but it, it leaves them susceptible to second shots. Good read on the skip. They go inside. Taylor Miller left alone. Yeah, it's just, they beat you so many different ways. They're playing with a tremendous amount of confidence right now. They're moving the ball with a, a lot of confidence. There's no hesitation. Cash. Contact, and there's the foul on Taylor. So Slim Cash will be at the free throw line when we come back. Diana Tarazi calls her teammate Cappy Pondexter at the closer. There have been stretches where she's flat out played basketball, giving her team the lead. Winning the WNBA championship will mean a, a great deal that I've never won on any level. And just to have that ring on my finger would mean a whole lot. To make that kind of shot. And all you can do, all you can do is be there and contest a shot and make her have to work at it. And you know what? D Detroit has done that. Cappy just makes tough shots. 
Guys, the biggest cheer of the afternoon from this large crowd of over 20,000 came a moment ago when they played the famous scene from Animal House where Belushi asked, was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? <laughs> That's all they had to cheer about so far. <laughs> Cash at the free throw uh, line. Johnson somehow got inside. I'm looking for a spark anyway. They haven't had one. Especially not from Katie Smith. Two puts in game with the backcourt mate. Cash fights it off the glass and in. She has had a positive game today. Hadn't been enough to this point, but she's been a plus. And the push by Swin Cash on Miller. Well, one of the things that I've always thought Swin Cash did as well as anybody was really pursue the basketball. And then because of the way she's built, she's able to sneak in between little gaps to get to the rim. She's not encumbered by having to lumber to the basket. She just quickly gets to the basket. Back to the 2-3 zone goes Phoenix, or it goes Detroit. Braxton the defense. Smith the foul, and that's five on Tangela Smith. One more and she's gone. We've got 357 left in the third. I gotta believe Kelly Schumacher's gonna get the call here. This is a long way to go. Yeah. Paul Westhead's reading your mind, guys. Here comes Kelly Schumacher. And they're in the penalty with 357. So Smith to the bench. You lose a lot of offense there. Angela averaging 13 a game during the finals. Kelly Schumacher less than a point. Nolan the free throw it does all come down to this game five WNBA.com as you covered out there all access videos behind the scenes photos expert analysis from Rebecca Lobo and Doris Burke I take it yes <laughs> on occasion so, okay and blogs from <laughs> Diana Tarazi Katie Smith WNBA.com starts the break. The crowd wants a run. Nolan. Halfway down and out. It's been that afternoon. They can't get anything to drop. Hard foul by Smith on Miller who takes Another knock as Braxton falls on top of her. What'd you notice about Cappy Pondexter in that three on two? You never get a good player to play faster or slower than they want to play. She was in complete control. Gonna wait to see what the defense did and then react off it. He made the perfect decision. And remember how out of control she was towards the end of that game one. They got beat here on the road at the double technical foul, trying to take the ball away from Deanna Nolan. Paul West has done a nice job of keeping her and keeping her voice throughout the rest of the series. I'm a firm believer in it. Teams take the persona of their coach on their back, no question. Phoenix active defensively, making everything difficult. Now that's just a tough shot. D on the run, right past Braxton, another lay-in. He started three for three, next, missed her next eight, and her pops likes it. They roll for Twitty, but they can't trade baskets right now. You know, it's kind of a tough situation for Detroit to be in. They should push the ball a little bit more so that they can get some easy buckets instead of having to work against Phoenix's half-court defense all the time. However, Dars. Yeah, Diana Taurasi pushing the pace here. Goes right down the heart of the defense. Attacks Kara Lawson's feet, or Kara Braxton's feet, excuse me. And then De Deanna Nolan. The expectation coming into this thing was that she would be a star. Gets off the screen and roll. Great elevation, but needs to come with a little bit more of it. 
Tarazi, the cold streak throughout the middle of the game, just got a layup, and uh, Nolan just three. 411 Penny Taylor just picked up her third foul. The flip side of that, though, yeah. turning the, the heat up here and running up and down is, well, you're playing Phoenix's game. But if you don't do it, what's the difference? Right now, you're down 15. If you stay like this, and you lose by 15. So if you let Phoenix score 100 and you lose by 15, well, at least you've made an effort. Do they have the personnel in the game to be able to do that? Feenstra now in off the bench. Yeah, well, it, it's going to come down to the guards. You know, Deanna Nolan, Shannon Johnson, and Katie Smith are going to have to fuel this comeback. Rip Hamilton in the house. Chauncey Phillips has been a big supporter of the shot, been in many playoff games. Chuck Daly in the house, but the shock disappointing to this point. And the foul on Pearson as Taylor goes to the basket hard. Great ball reversal. and twice against the zone we've seen Penny Taylor still be in a one-on-one -on -one situation with her ability to go off the dribble so ball reversal gets you in a one-on-one -on -one isolation and she is terrific those two steps she takes are very long steps and ball reversal is the key you know sometimes teams just shoot too quickly against the zone by moving the basketball and creating that gap in the zone you can isolate anybody you want one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, Heather, what do you have? Terry, Penny Taylor has a huge decision to make after this game. Next year is an Olympic year. She's a star on the Australian national team, MVP of the World Championships, and her Olympic preparation will conflict with the WNBA next season. Ideally, she told me she'd like to play for both the Australian national team and the WNBA next year. She said, I've spent seven years in the league. I can't imagine not playing. The national team would prefer that I stay with them. She said she won't make the decision until early next year, but admitted it will be the biggest decision of her life. A number of players have that decision to make as Tarazi buries a three from long range. The U.S., by the way, beat Australia today in what you'd call a friendly if you were a soccer fan. And uh, Lauren Jackson did not play in that game for Australia. 96-64, the final. The U.S. looking pretty good. Lynette Pearson picking up her fourth. Lauren Jackson doesn't play in any friendlies. Whenever she's playing, there's nothing friendly. <laughs> there's nothing friendly about it. That's what I like about her, though. Huh, me too. She still have any college eligibility left home this year? Nope, sorry about that. There she goes, one-on-one, -on -one, Penny Taylor. I'm telling you, it's uncanny how that girl, that woman, can get to the basket in as few dribbles as she does. How long her strides are. She has taken up so much paint area when she gets to the rim. The foul was on Pearson. Fifth. And it's not like, well, don't come out so far that she can go by you. Because if you don't come out, she's going to knock it in. She's such an excellent shooter. And now, as you look at Lynette Pearson, the sixth woman of the year, inaugural season for that award, the WNBA, she goes to the bench with the five fouls. Phoenix, 15 of 15. Now 16 of 16 from the free throw line. Well, this is, no pun intended, a shock this afternoon. These are the two very evenly matched teams. I know Phoenix had the blowout win in game two, but they have really battled. Detroit with the best regular season record, defending champs, Katie Smith, trying to do her part. And Detroit does a lot of good things to get open shots. I'm sure Bill Lambert is frustrated. They don't do them enough. The entire bench for Detroit standing up, actually on the court watching play at the other end. Snell gives them another chance. And they will bring it out. Cross four! Cross four! Come on, the screener. Screen the zone. Screen the zone. Screen the zone. You know what that play is called? Screen the zone. You think? <laughs> oh, wide open, too. Great step in. Good read by Penny. Yeah, your coaches come up with all these decoys. You just screen the zone. Big strike for the left hand. Still a chance for the Mercury, though. On Dexter, good defense from Nolan. Smith, the foul is five seconds. 5.2 on the game clock. 
feels like the free throw attempts starting to add up here for Phoenix. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on you between Penny and Kathy's ability to go to the basket off the dribble. Great body control. That was a great response to what Detroit did down this end. Shannon Johnson attacked the basket, found Feaster for a layup. Well, now your response either, is either walk it up and wait for the last shot or go on the attack. Kathy chose to go on the attack. Final chance for the shock here in the third. Nope. Can't get a boost from Johnson. So another positive quarter for Diana Taraji and the Mercury. One step closer, perhaps, to their first WNBA title. The fourth from suburban Detroit straight ahead. WNBA players care about their community as part of USA Basketball's training camp in New York last week. Players including Sue Bird, Alicia Milton Jones, and Elena Bird. Here, excuse me, invited 200 local high school students for an open practice session hosted by Nike. Students had a chance to spend time with the players and talk to them about how to set and achieve their goals. WNBA cares, leading, inspiring, and creating positive change. Inspiring and creating positive change? What the shock needs right now. Taylor. Tarazi, Pondexter, the big three doing it in different ways. They each lead in a separate category statistically for Phoenix starting the fourth with a 15-point lead. Swin Cash, one-on-one, -on -one, now doubled. Johnson, the offensive rebound. Well, they need some person to step up in this fourth, Doris. Quality defense, Diana outsized, but on the pass. As soon as the pass is released, she comes off of Feaster, stops bodying up and uses her advantage, which is her quickness. Relatively speaking, Coach. Yeah, relatively speaking, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there's a reason why she there's a reason why she wears those socks high like that. Hey, Rebecca, what happened in the Detroit huddle? Well, Terry, I wasn't low on that last huddle, and Bill Lambier, pretty subdued as was his team. He just said, I need more offensive rebounds. And to Coach Orama's point, he said, we've got to push the ball. No second shots. We've got a long way to go, guys. Play hard and guards. You've got to box out on top. 15 points, the deficit. As Pondexer sets up the offense. Screen from Taylor on the kick out to Mazzani. Wow. That's the only response that we've seen from Lambeer this afternoon. They have had no answer. There's one, Nolan. The game has to be a little more off tempo for Detroit to give themselves enough possessions to come back here. And if it means giving those up, well, the next thing you got to do, hope they miss. They're just trading twos for threes. Well, there's a three. They answer with a trifecta of their own. So major difference for Deanna this season, the maturity to understand what she is needed to take over. Will she do it in this final 10 minutes? That yeah, has been a difference with her. She's, she's done it this season a number of times. Pondex wow. with the spin and the foul. Wow. That is a big time, big time offensive play right there. That is big. Look how much space Cappy covers. She goes from the foul line to the rim in one step. Quickness, strength, tenacity, toughness. Oh, yeah, talent. We're out of adjectives at this point. Let's check in with Heather. Guys, back in July, Cappy averaged just 14 points a game, well below her average. So Coach Westhead pulled her aside and had a private one-on-one -on -one meeting where he said, quote, you don't have any juice. And Cappy agreed, telling me as a player, you feel it, you know when you aren't playing at your highest level. So that day, she said she made up her mind to turn it up a notch so she wouldn't have any regrets on the season. Well, guys, the results averaging about 26 points a game in the playoffs. I'd say she's got some juice. Hasn't turned down that dial since. And it goes to 11. Miller. Oh, 
Doris, this game has become a playground match right now. Well, it has been. And what I find interesting is Deanna Nola. Now, she misses that shot, but she's made a couple. Why did she wait so long to display this kind of ability to get those shots off anytime she wants? Well, sometimes, you know, players are caught betwixt and between. Let the game come to you. How many times have you heard that? Let the game come to you. Don't force anything. Well, you know what? Sometimes the game doesn't come to you. You hey, gotta go to it. How do you like this UConn matchup here? Cash on the foul to Rozzi. Almost by her. Swin second. You're giving a little extra out there. Well, Diana can't guard Swin. And Swin can't guard Diana. <laughs> oh. Double. Digits all over the place. Win now matched up with Taylor. Here's Pondexter. Oh, no one tried to stop her. Nope. George, where do you go if you're Detroit? I think you got to go through Nolan. She is the player on your team most capable of getting shots when she wants. Johnson's going to take it himself. Knocks down the three. I, I've said it. Uh, Shannon Johnson's ability to knock down threes at the consistency with which she's done it have shocked me. Three for five tonight. She's made a lot of threes. You know, that's not been her game historically. No, and if you're, if you're Phoenix, you give it up. But if you're, if you're Shannon Johnson, you got to knock a couple of those in just, for, just to keep the defense honest. Walking violation on Nolan. Thought someone was on the wing, and only Bill Lambeer was standing there wide open. 15th turnover. And where is Katie Smith right now? She talked about disappearing in the fourth quarter in game four. See, the one thing that Phoenix has is they have Kelly Miller, whose first and primary goal is to deliver the ball. They have Kathy Pondexter who played point guard in high school and college. They got that, that's right. They are playing with three point guards right now. Detroit is playing with three scoring guards. It's very, very difficult to run offense. All right, here's Smith, the three. It's a 13 point lead for Phoenix. Finals record between the two teams, 20 from deep. Get the switch up, that's a foul. There's that mismatch. Nothing she can do. Schumacher blew the easy one and then created the five. So Kelly Schumacher with her fourth and had the layup. Detroit looking for some life here in game five. The title on the line. Point lead for the Mercury on the road, trying to win their first WNBA title. Paul Westhead, of course, won an NBA title as the coach of the Lakers back in 1980 with his assistant, Pat Riley, looking like Napoleon Dynamite. They had Magic going up against Dawkins and a great matchup with the Sixers, and they won it all. So now he's trying to close it out on the road. They would be the first in WNBA history to do just that. What's he telling his team right now, you know? I think if you're Paul Westhead, what you're saying is we've got to do what we've been doing till the next TV timeout. If we're still up 13, 14, 15 at the next TV timeout, effectively this game is over. If you're Bill Lambert, you're saying right now, let's get it under double figures. Let's put ourselves in position to win in the last three minutes. But Doris, if you're Bill Lambert, how are you saying to get it done? What can they do? That Nothing's really been that effective. No, you had a lot of misses from Nolan Smith, but he said, I'm going to ride those two players because when Katie Smith needs to deliver, generally speaking, she has delivered. Lynette Pearson back on the floor with those five fouls. Katie Smith is four for six from three. Can she get one off here? Six boards and five assists. Johnson, the veteran, looking for her first title. And Tarazi late getting there. It's the third on D. And the second team foul on Phoenix. In fact, both. Phoenix and Detroit with two team fouls. But Saunders in the house. Lindsey Harding right next to him. Remember the, the top pick in the trade with Phoenix. So uh, could have been in a Phoenix uniform. But they traded for Tangela Smith. And that's been a big move by Ann Myers Drysdale. Oh! You don't see that foul. You don't the whistle see that foul. goes back. 
to Phoenix. There is Annie. Good friend, former colleague uh, here on the WNBA broadcast. He elected to the inaugural class of the FIBA Basketball Hall of Fame. She went in with some big time names. Oh, Bill Russell, Dean Smith. He's over in Spain and missed the first couple of games of the series. I'll tell you what. Cross, cross. Unless there's a felony committed on the floor, there's going to be very few fouls called. Why? Well, I think right now the officials are intent on letting the players figure out what's going to happen. Big time shot from Tweedy. The lead is 11. They're not out of it yet. Plenty of time. Can't play not to lose it with Phoenix. You got to go with what got you here. Tipped away. Detroit basketball. Got him going here in the palace. Shannon Johnson has been assertive from the moment she stepped on the floor. It's why she's played as many minutes as she has. Chance to get it to single digits. One on one. Miller, good defense on Nolan. Boy, forced a tough shot. And the reach. Sweetie frustrated, although trying to stop the clock perhaps. Down at this end is Pearson. This was a rebound situation here that Clint Pearson went for the rebound and there was a collision. Bottom right of your screen. Hey, wrap your foot! Oh, the elbow right to the face to Razi as she ripped down the rebound. Remember earlier in the series, and, and not intentional whatsoever, but it was the elbow of Diana Trazzi, that same one, the left one, that created that black eye underneath the right eye of Katie Smith. Well, one was on a layup. Yep. And this one was on a rebound. And this one, a little more... I'm sending a message, I think. The other one was accidental. This one, I think I'm sending a message. You think that was intentional? Uh, you feel like she held her behind her? I think she knew there was somebody there, and I think she wanted to send a message. Here's this one was accidental. Yeah, here's the other one. This one, you're going up for a layup, and you're trying to get your, you know, your body in position to score. This, depending on what angle you see, Diana felt the body, and I think she was trying to hit somebody pretty hard. Came in knowing that someone was there. It wasn't like her back was turned the entire time. How special is Kathy Pondexter? How badly does she want this game? She has been the one to silence this crowd the entire night. Gets by Swin Cash, able to take the contact and still score. It. This is a little high screen, not a special one, not a great screen. They have to switch on it, though, Terry, and that puts him in a tough position defensively. If you saw that, Doris, Kathy didn't wait for the contact. She created it and then scored like a good, solid offensive player will do. Got 16 in the second half. And remember, she had 20 in the second half of game four. No one up and under off the glass and in. Putting up numbers, trying to keep the shot in this thing. She's got 24. Detroit out of that 2-3 zone. They're going to count on their man-to-man. -man. The screen from Taraji. Smith left wide open. Ford couldn't get out there. It's been so much more selective on her shots tonight. Tangela Smith has taken three shots. She's made all three. Really selective. Better shot selection from her. In rhythm. Not rushed. In rhythm. That's a three for Katie Smith. Champions don't go quietly, coach. They don't go quietly. No, and, and it's... If you're Bill Lambert, you're wondering, why did it take getting down 16, 17, 18 to bring that out? Coaches have been wondering that since the peach basket. Long rebound to Johnson. Hondex just stepped out. 
nowhere to go. Detroit trying to become the first team since 2002 to defend their title. If they do so, it'll be on the backs of their superstars, Deanna Nolan, the best athlete in the league. How about that crossover to slice between defenders of body control and off window? That's great stuff. And the players hit more threes than anyone else. Katie Smith, keeping them close. Hi, I'm Katie Smith. I'm Deanna Nolan. Hi, I'm Swing Cash, the Detroit Shock. And you're watching the WNBA Finals. WNBA Finals on ESPN. Phoenix with the lead, 243 left in this decisive game five. The coaches, Rick Mahorn and Bill Lambeer, the bad boys back in the late 80s, early 90s for the Pistons, and at least in part because of that, the bad boy rep for this team, the shock, but guess at least visually who's been on the tougher end of that matchup. It's been a physical series. Pearson on the right, Smith on the left, all courtesy of that left elbow of Diana Taurasi. She made a comment, right? She said they think that just because we're finesse, we're not physical. They haven't backed down physically throughout the entire series. No, they have not. Con Dexter keeping it in her hands, no surprise, as we come down the stretch. She reminds me a little bit of a running back who gets that initial shoulder pass the defender. And once you get that shoulder, then that defender's in a tough spot. Emma Thomas. I mean Smith, though. Yeah. Listen, this is the play that just happened, and this is why it's, it's, okay. it gets like this. Cappy now is convinced that she got fouled after the foul. First she got fouled, and then she thinks she got cheap shotted after the foul. And that's what kind of causes that chippiness to exist. Every time Detroit has gotten close. Couple of chances to get it to single digits. Big plays from Phoenix, especially Captain Pondexter. And as we approach the two minute mark, guess who handles the ball now? That's a foul. Pull it out. Trying to foul. And they get it. Judy. Don Oranger, the president of the WNBA, every phase of this league has gotten better in terms of the players and coaches, I think management, and uh, it's been an incredible run here in the playoffs, too. The first round was unbelievable. Well, that last piece might be more important than anything else, because when the WNBA first started, Coach, it, it seemed like it was very much collegiate-oriented. General managers had to learn how to make trades, how to set teams up. I think one of the best things that's happened to this league, obviously the league has gotten younger, there's more talent in the league, but moving the three-point line back, widening the lane, and going to the 24-second shot clock with eight seconds to get it across has worked magic for this, for this league. Now if we could just get back to the big ball. Absolutely. You don't like the small ball, huh? For the big one. Nolan likes it right now. Wow, that's a tough shot right there. 12-point game. We try to foul again here. Scrambling for a steal. They want to foul late in the shot clock. They get it to 10, and then Nolan commits the foul. Yeah, what do you think of the strategy? Well, if you're going to foul, you got to foul. Uh, generally, right the, away, right? the theory is try to steal the inbounds pass or the first pass. Then if you don't get it, you got to foul. Because you got to give yourself plenty of time in case they make the free throws. 23 of 24 Phoenix from the line and getting better. Tough times for Ford in Detroit. Phoenix the number one free throw shooting team throughout the course of the regular season. So provided they keep it in the right people's hands, they should be okay. Launching the three quickly is Katie Smith. An 11 point game. And the defense has been really, really good. And Detroit's just making some really tough shots right now. And again, they're shooting with nothing, nothing to lose. Now, I don't know that they started the game with the same mentality. There was a tentativeness, there was a sluggishness. 
now there seems to be a maybe it's too little too late I don't know coach Lambeer's quote before the game we enjoy elimination games it makes us concentrate it makes us play hard for the entire game not sure he got that kind of effort from the outset just their body language just the way they approached the game was much different Lambeer maybe coming up short in his bid to win his third WNBA title but no secret he'd like to be a head coach in the NBA will he get that chance well, I think clearly uh, if you're Bill Lambeer you've done as much as you can do in the WNBA level Terry if you are going to get that chance I think if you're him the most disturbing thing that happened is your franchise your teammate Joe Dumars had an opening on Cliff Saunders staff and they went in a different direction obviously I, I would think that would be something that hit him a little bit hard Lynette Pearson commits her sixth. And that's it for Pearson, who has had a terrific season. But only four points this afternoon after 23 the other night and being their leading scorer, averaging almost 17 a game through the finals. Those knees starting to jump on the sideline. <laughs> well, we talked about the Stars having star games and then the lesser stars contributing and doing their part and what happened tonight Phoenix got star performances from their stars and got contributions from everyone and Detroit came up short in their stars and in their bench contribution they didn't come up short off the play of number 14 Anna Nolan terrific through the finals and maybe taking it to the next level but she'll take a seat Katie Smith as well to the bench for Bill Lambeer record setting day from the free throw line for Penny Taylor tied a finals record with 32 points in game one and now has 30. We've got to thank our stat man Stevie LeBeau whose hand has been on fire with all the records set in this championship game. The championship series. Paul Westhead will be the first to have won an NBA title as a head coach and now a WNBA title. Out west, the Lakers in 80 and now Penny. Phoenix in 2007. Penny. Oh. Keep the ball. You shoot I, the ball. His I, last instruction, shoot the ball. I think he's proven it in other places. <laughs> but the answer is yes, you can win a title in this league with Paul Ball. Oh, yes. We questioned it. He was right. Guy's got a PhD. Of course he knows. <laughs> he brought plenty of intellectual correctness. Guy's got a PhD. <laughs> intellectual truth. Professor of Shakespeare. Five on the shot clock. Smith. The party continues. And Tarazi, you can't be recognized as maybe one of the greats defining your career. We said at the top of the game, these games do that. And now she will add that title to the list. Three NCAA championships, Olympic gold, now WNBA title. Final seconds here in the Palace of Auburn Hills. And for the first time in their history, the Phoenix Mercury on a chance of the WNBA. And for the first time ever, a team closes it out on the road. Game five goes to Phoenix. And Doris and Gino it really was never in doubt today. I thought Phoenix, as young as they are, with such limited finals experience, got great composure and play to start the game. They looked relaxed. I think that's a tribute to Paul Westhead. Let it go, girl. Let it go, girl. Whoa. Whoa. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Doc. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see Paul Westhead, and, th and this is why this is why coaches coach. Paul West has been doing this for 40 years and let me tell you something he's won at the highest level there is and never gets old and the feeling that he's going through right now is absolutely no different than when he won with the Lakers I promise you that
Will he be on the bench next year? Don't know yet, but uh, maybe we'll find out. Right now, I don't think he's thinking about that at all. They win it. Ann Myers Drysdale, congratulations to her. Well, word on Phoenix before we go back uh, to talk about, uh, or word, word on Detroit before we talk about Phoenix's win. Uh, you think about dynasties and whatnot. They were going for their third win, Lambeer's third win, and they had it right here at home doors. They couldn't close it out. Yeah, they went down swinging. I think the one thing he kept saying about his team was, it takes our back to be up against the wall before we start playing. And for the first time that pinched them, they had been 7-0 and facing elimination games, but yet when they needed another one, they couldn't get it done. Diana Tarazi uh, wins another one. Uh, I know you got thoughts about that, Coach. Well, I said I would never bet against her in a championship game, Terry. Uh, but Detroit, how often can you put yourself in that situation? You're really playing the percentages and saying to yourself, you know what? We are going to come up short at some time. And today was just the worst time for them to come out sluggish. She wins another one. Let's get a word right now from Diana Tarazi. Date. Coach Oriana finally has stopped talking. No team, team has ever won the championship away from home. Why were you guys able to take control right from the very beginning? You know, we're confident. Everyone kept saying, you know, they're the toughest team, but I think we showed today who really the, the toughest team is, the toughest players, mentally and physically. So we just outlasted them. You won three national championships in college and Olympic gold. How sweet is your first WNBA? Uh, this thing champion? is awesome right now. Because the WNBA is just the highest level of basketball. And to do it with, you know, people that you truly love is a lot different than doing it with people you don't like. All right, Dave. No thank problem. you so much. All right, Rebecca, remember, George, too, they were one shot away from being eliminated. If the shot goes in, the last possession, Detroit had it in game four, they're done. A little bit of destiny, perhaps, on the side of those young people. Are we seeing a changing of the guard, the new superstars, Tarasi and Palm Dexter? 108-92, your final, the Mercury 2007 champs. Back in a moment. Congratulations to the Phoenix Mercury WNBA champs for the very first time as Diana Taurasi and Cappy Pondexter combined to score 43 points. Back with Nancy Lieberman and Carolyn Peck, I'm Linda Cohn. And Nancy, from the get-go, Cappy Pondexter set the tone for this Mercury and took them to the victory. Well, she had about 26 points worth of Kohler bold moves in this game. She was absolutely amazing in the series. So strong to the basket. Great body control. Knows when to pull up when she reads the defense. She does that because she keeps her eyes up. She's got great separation moves. Kathy Pondexter continues to prove why she is a fabulous young star in this league. Not only is she their leading scorer, as I said, Carolyn, but she can assist people, she makes people better, and now she's a champion. Well, and Nancy, I think that Kathy Pondexter played like she was the hungriest. She talked about in the open, she had never won it at any level, and tonight, Cappy Pondexter played like she was on a mission. Cappy and the Phoenix Mercury, the fourth different champion in the last four years. Let's send it down to the champs and Heather Cox. Thanks, Linda. The matchup between the two best teams in the WNBA certainly proved to be a series to remember. The defending shock, the defending champs, the Detroit Shock, played with grit and determination, but ultimately it was the Phoenix Mercury who answered every yeah! challenge. And they have become the first WNBA team to actually win a championship on the road. And now to present the 2007 WNBA Finals Trophy to Robert Sarver, the managing partner, as well as Annie Myers Drysdale, general manager, and Paul Westhead, the head coach. Please welcome Donna Orender, the president of the WNBA. Thank you, Heather. First, let me say it's been a fantastic 2007 WNBA season led by the most exciting playoffs in our history. Let me recognize Bill Davidson, of course, Tom Wilson and Coach Lambier and the entire Detroit organization who has been so much a part of the success of the WNBA. Thank you, guys. And now, a moment I know you've all been waiting for, correct? Robert Sarver, yeah. Andy Myers Jacea, Coach Westhead. I'm telling you, it's what, an, what an exciting brand of basketball. Paul Ball, I guess, really works, right? Yeah. It is my privilege. Yeah, it is my privilege yeah, to present to you the championship trophy as the 2007 WNBA champions. <laughs> coach Westhead, congratulations. You become the first coach to win a title in both the WNBA and the NBA as a coach. Ultimately, with all that experience, what do you think the turning point was in this very close series? 
Well, I think the turning point was that we got out and made shots, and uh, Penny Taylor showed up today. Penny! <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, when you have a good group of uh, players like this that play so hard for you, uh, you know, I, uh, I've done it before, so I'll say it again. I, I want to thank them for the joy they've given me. Yeah, baby. Coach, congratulations now. We've got to talk a little bit of business. There's been a lot of speculation and a lot of rumor about your future with the WNBA and the Phoenix Mercury. It has been reported that your good friend PJ Car Carlissimo has offered you a job with the Seattle Sonics on his coaching staff. Where will you be coaching next year? Speculation, speculation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know uh, I have a date with Dee in Paris. She owes me a dinner. So uh, <laughs> and I, you owe me that's, the only, <laughs> that's the only place I know for sure I'm going to be right now. Well, Thank we'll you. let you enjoy this win. Annie Myers Drysdale, the general manager of the Phoenix yeah, Mercury. Congratulations in your first year you win the first championship for this franchise does it get any better than this it's pretty awesome i mean the support of robert sarver and the whole group at phoenix and uh what paul has done with his coaching staff and, and putting together this team it's it's really been a lot of fun and so proud of them and now for a little bit more hardware to hand out the 2007 most valuable player award once again donna orander okay She's averaged 22 points and 3.2 re rebounds per game. I don't think that says it all about her leadership on the court. She makes every Rutgers basketball player and yeah. graduate proud. Yeah. The MVP, yeah. Kathy yeah. Pondexter. Kathy Pondexter, I've got to show a little bit of your artwork right here on your bicep. You have the future, the That's WNBA the logo. How did you know that this moment would finally come? I didn't know. Um, I, I just got to thank God, you know, just for blessing me and the team. Um, I think we worked extremely hard the last two months, and, you know, this, this goes to the team. It's not just me, oh, yeah. but it's everybody. You are truly the difference maker in the second half of games four and games five. When you cranked your game up a notch, how did you flip the switch in your head to get this team its championship? I was just thinking championship the whole time. I'm um, just staying aggressive. Um, my teammates helped me, and, you know, I'm just happy. We rarely celebrate now. Yeah. All right, we'll let you guys get to it. Congratulations. The Phoenix Mercury are your 2007 WNBA Finals champions. And now let's send it back upstairs to Linda Cohn with a little bit of a song and dance. <laughs> We would expect nothing less. Thank you, Heather. The Phoenix Mercury become just the third team in WNBA history to win the WNBA title a year after missing the playoffs entirely. Talk to me, Nancy, about the makeup of this team. I have to tell you, Ann Myers Drysdale finished what the former GM VP Seth Sulka started many years ago. He was the one who drafted Pondexter, got Penny Taylor there, and drafted Tarasi. Those guys had 73 points in this championship game. The fact that this organization has always been a champion from the day that Cheryl Miller took the coaching reign on the sidelines. They had a vision for winning, Carolyn, and here's the payoff. Yeah, but Nancy, you got to give credit to Paul Westhead. And he started this season off with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. He said, we are be forever bound by the task at hand. We are forever bound. And in Seattle in round one, Annie Myers Drysdale brought Bill Walton into the locker room and he talked to the team and he said, you are forever bound when you win a championship. And Linda, this team, wanted to be bound for 2007. And it's only fitting that the highest scoring team in the regular season ties a WNBA record for the finals with those 108 points. Congratulations to the Phoenix Mercury. It is only fitting that this incredible WNBA postseason came down to one game and one dominant team that showed up on the road to win something they have never won before. As you saw Penny Taylor, the star of this game, with her 30 points, kissing her husband there uh, in happiness of this big victory. So once again, all these fantastic finishes and the record-breaking performances, take a look just in case you missed everybody. Thanks, everyone. Underneath, BJ. Triple from Christian. Got another. <laughs> and they have made WNBA history.
Stop playing for 40 minutes. Let's go. Let's go. And that goes down. She is feeling it. Girl is playing some basketball.